the largest organ in the human body. So there's no surprise that every now and again, some issues are gonna arise with it. Eczema is one of those skin conditions and it impacts so many children. So talk, tell me, Dr. Adila, what are the symptoms of eczema? Yeah, um, yeah, eczema does impact a lot of children. Up to 20% of babies would have um, eczema um, in the infant years. Um, and throughout your life, up to 30% of children can be affected by it. Um, it can be a very uncomfortable condi condition. For most children, the skin just becomes really dry, but it can be, well, for everyone really intensely itchy so mm. they so itch and dryness are the predominant two features um, children get a rash um, the rash is often in what we call the flexural areas so it's in the um, skin folds in the front of the arms or the back of the legs um, but in little babies it's often on the face um, or can be on the extensive parts um, of the body mm. um, if the lesions become infected, then they be can become painful, red and hot as well. So not a nice condition, mm. but very, very common. Yeah, I bet. So yeah. how is it caused? What yeah. causes eczema? Um, it's multifactorial. So it's an interplay of a variety of um, genetic environmental um, conditions. Um, most, uh, you, you normally genetically predisposed to it. So there's um, a protein in the skin that's defective um, and that's um, genetically inherent, inherited. So protein's called filaggrin for those that want to know the name, um, because um, that protein doesn't work very well. The skin barrier um, is permeable. Um, and the skin is, becomes cracked and dry um, because the um, skin barrier, which is supposed to keep you know toxins and allergens out of the body, um, is not intact. Uh, you do get exposed to allergens um, and sensitised um, to. Um, certain environmental allergens um, that can lead to what we call an atopic march um, so it drives your immune system more towards the allergy pathway um, and you can also on top of that then get um, high fever or asthma symptoms so people that's predisposed to that um, other factors that play a role so often infection um, because the skin is um, broken um, it does all our skins are colonized with um, bacteria but um, in children with eczema staph aureus can often cause um, flares um, and can cause it to become um, infected um, other causes, uh, so food allergies, um, it's very, that's a hard one, it's not always, um, you're not always able to prove it, uh, mm. so it's not necessarily easy to diagnose. Um, and house dust mites is another one where, you know, it's around everywhere and almost impossible to avoid. But yeah, a variety of other allergens can sometimes drive the, um, the condition, yeah. Yeah, because even um, some soaps and things like that can cause yeah. it as well. So yeah. that would be... Yeah. yeah. So the soaps, um, so that, good that you talk about it because soaps breaks down the skin barrier further. So definitely something to avoid mm. if you have eczema. Um, soaps and um, um, some people um, are quite sensitive to um, chemicals in you know, all sorts of stuff that we yeah. use in our day-to-day -day life. So that does not help people with eczema. So they're better off yeah. using something like goat's milk soap or what else would yeah, they use? Yeah, um, emollients or soap-free yeah, products. Yeah. yeah. So in, when, you, when you manage it, definitely avoid yep. any soap-type products. <laughs> there you have it. So how's it best treated then if your child does yeah. have an outbreak? Yeah, well, the, the um, most important thing is bucket loads of moisturizers or emollients. Um, so I always tell people as much as you can physically get into the skin, you can't use too much. So we ask people to use um, emollients at least twice a day at the very least. Normally when you get out of bath, when your skin is still quite moist, um, you um, apply um, moisturizers to seal in the moisture to um, try and create a, a barrier that your skin doesn't naturally have um, and um, if that doesn't um, keep things under control then you would add steroid creams um, so that's um, a lot of people are a bit scared of steroids but if it's used um, in the right way then it mm -hmm. is um, quite safe to use um, so this this strength uh, will depend on the severity or where on your body 
um, you have um, eczema. eczema. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's really the two main things. Um, but we teach people once the eczema flares, uh, then you would step up your management. Um, so if um, if you, for example, get secondary infection, then um, antibiotics might be a good thing. Um, if the eczema lesions are very resistant to treatment, we sometimes do wet wraps where you wrap up the child like a mummy. And mm. <laughs> they sleep in a, a wet wrap. Um, bleach baths to reduce staph colonization on the skin. Um, and for the majority of people, that type of treatment is adequate. Um, some people need to avoid certain food items or um, treat um, allergies in a separate, different way. Um, and very occasionally do you need to um, actually modify the immune system. That's out of my territory, though. Yeah. <laughs> so that's sort of the really severe um, wow. persistent cases. So yeah. any advice for parents that have got yeah. children suffering yeah. with eczema? Um, I think people um, in the um, general public often think, oh, it's just eczema. It's quite a hard condition yeah. to treat. Um, for my son has, has had it yeah. in the past, so yeah. it's not nice. It doesn't necessarily just go away. It is a chronic condition, so the importance of chronic conditions is that you have to um, keep up with your treatment. Mm. You can't um, be slack about it because it will often comes back if you um, step back your treatment. So um, so moisturizers make sure that it's part of the um, daily routine. So if your child has got eczema, what sort of products? Yeah. You said, you're mentioning uh, moisturizers a lot. What sort yeah. of moisturizers do you recommend? Um, so I normally ask parents to experiment with um, various moisturizers. There are th some that's really thin. Um, we call them lotions. Then you get creams and then you get the ointments and the fatty ointments um, in the North Queensland weather though um, mm. I think very few people will um, tolerate the really thick products um, so having a variety at home um, if the weather is drier and it's not that hot you can probably use the thicker um, ointment based products um, but for most um, of the year here in town so you'd probably just want to use a cream um, yep. the there are um, certain brands that um, have an indicator on them that can show you how thick, you know, the moisturizer is. Um, but it's normally good to try a variety and see what which, which ones work. Um, they should be um, perfume free, um, so fragrance free, just really, really simple stuff, not the expensive, um, yeah, specialized products. Really simple, straightforward, over the counter, yep, um, stuff that you can buy in bulk. So it's like your sorbeline creams <laughs> yes, and things that's like fine. that. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, you have that. Try a few different options. Yep. <laughs> Perfect milk baths. <barbs>. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not allergic to milk. <laughs> true, true, true. So although there is no cure, eczema can be managed with medical treatment. So if your GP is ever wanting to refer your child to a pediatrician, ask them to refer you to the amazing team at Townsville Pediatrics. They have a team of specialized pediatricians with a huge range of specialty areas, so your child will be in very good hands. <laughs>